Okay, welcome back. So, uh, we had concluded the last lecture on uh, PN junction in equilibrium. We had expressed uh, the, you know, the expression for depletion region, built in potential and so on. And we said that today we shall start PN junction under bias. So, when we apply voltage what happens? There will be current flow. So, today we will analyze that and only then we will understand how devices work. Right? So, till now we had set the base for essentially uh, how to calculate the depletion region, the built in potential, the field, the you know the, the, the and with respect to doping with respect to different band gap. So, now we will actually start dynamic the conditions, the, the non-equilibrium conditions when you apply voltage, how does the PN junction behave. Okay? So, we will come to the whiteboard if you recall the last slide you know the last lecture was that I told you that the depletion region that forms in a PN junction which is this, the depletion re region will become wider if your uh, if your doping is lighter. Okay? So, if you have a lighter doping that will become wider because it depends inversely as 1 by N A plus 1 by N D square root of that and then there is of course there are other terms. So, if your doping becomes larger then your depletion also becomes smaller. right? So, that uh, we had talked about and also I told you how depletion region and built in potential depend on the band gap. right? A wider band gap material will also have a larger uh, built in voltage. So, if you have a silicon of 1.1 E V and gallium nitride of 3.4 E V as the band gap, then the built in voltage for silicon will be always smaller than that of gallium nitride. right? So, we had done all these things uh, in the static conditions of PN junction. Now, we are ready to study uh, a PN junction under bias. Right. So, I will draw the I will draw the equilibrium band diagram, we will start from there. So, suppose your this is your Fermi level, right? Um, this is equilibrium, so the Fermi level is same everywhere. Now, this is your n side, this is your p side. So, there can be two sort of uh, bias configurations that you can apply. One is that you apply a negative voltage on this side and positive voltage on this side. Okay. This is called forward bias. This is called forward bias configuration of a PN junction. You are putting negative to the N side, positive to the P side, and of course, there is the other condition where you know you can do the opposite, which is this is a Fermi level and P N. This is N. Oh, sorry, I am so sorry actually. This is uh, this is P. Sorry, okay. This is N. So, I am putting um, positive to P. Okay, I am putting positive to P and negative to N. Okay, this is called forward bias. Okay, positive to P and uh, negative to N, and then uh, this is P, this is N. So I'll put negative to P and positive to N. This is called reverse bias. Reverse bias mode or reverse bias configuration of a PN junction. Okay. So, the reason we call it a forward bias in this case, this is case A for example and this is case B. So, we will analyze them separately, but we can also derive expression for the current. When I say forward, so the point is that whenever you apply any voltage whether it is a in a forward bias mode or a reverse bias mode, the thing that happens is that the equilibrium is disturbed now. So, the formula will no longer be the same everywhere because current will start to flow. So, what happens in forward bias is that in forward bias you are putting a positive contact to P side. So, there are holes here, the P side has many holes and the positive bias will push the holes away. So, holes in the valence band will try to be pushed away to the other side okay? and you are applying negative bias to the electron uh, to the N side. So, the electrons will be pushed away by the negative bias. So, there are many electrons in N side. So, the electrons will be repelled and they will essentially be trying to go to the other side. In other words, we can say that carriers are getting injected from carriers are getting injected you know the majority carriers are getting injected from n to p and p to n carriers are getting injected from n to p electrons are getting injected and from p to n holes are getting injected why is that because you are applying a negative bias negative voltage at the terminal of the battery is connected to the n side the positive terminal of the battery is connected to the p side so carriers are injected the majority carrier of electrons from n side are now pushed to the P side and P has many holes, the holes are being pushed to the N side. It is a case of non equilibrium, of course, it is it's a case of non equilibrium now. Okay? And when they cross over here, will what will happen to that is that the depletion region, which was earlier there, W, that depletion region will now shrink or reduce. 
the depletion region will reduce because now more carriers are being pushed or injected from N side to P side, P side to N side. So, the depletion region will now shrink. So, what was earlier W will now become reduced okay, to, to some other value. And secondly, if you remember uh, there is this built in voltage that we had QVBI, that built in voltage will also now reduce because you are applying a voltage and you are injecting carrier. So, the built in voltage will reduce from QVBI to QVBI minus VA where VA is the applied voltage. Okay. So, suppose your built in voltage your built in voltage was suppose 0 0.76 volt and the applied you are applying a voltage of say 0 0.4 volt then the total this this drop across the P and N side will now become 0 0.76 minus 0 0.4 so 0 0.36 it will become 0 0.36 volt this drop will reduce. So, if I go to a different thing so essentially initially you had something like that a Fermi level right sorry you had a Fermi level right and then you had conduction and valence band like this. So, this was equilibrium this was QVBI and this was your depletion region for example, W. So, now if you apply forward bias forward bias okay. if you apply forward bias what will happen is that um, your depletion region uh, your built in voltage will reduce. Okay. So, this will have reduced to Q V B I minus Q applied voltage and your depletion region also will become smaller it will become W minus delta W some shrink it has happened okay. because now carriers are being injected to both sides. Of course, when carriers are injected now the, there will be a lot of current that will flow that is something we will very soon come to. But before that we should pause and uh, reflect that your Fermi level will now be different because on the so what we do is that we introduce the concept of a quasi Fermi level. Essentially you know you have several things now your you have a non equilibrium and there are different uh, you know the different concentration the electron and hole concentration will vary over position. So, whole side will have a Fermi level of its own I call it E F P and the electron side will have a Fermi level of its own I will call E F N. This is the quasi Fermi level which means the Fermi level locally locally what is the Fermi level. So, this local Fermi level will tell you the whole concentration here this local electron uh, the Fermi level will tell you the electron concentration here. So, this is a local Fermi level okay. and the difference of this two the difference of this two is your applied voltage the difference of the two quasi Fermi level on both side is your applied voltage which is why your total voltage drop is reducing by that amount also. Okay. So, quasi Fermi level is essentially the local Fermi level that will tell you precisely at what position you have the different concentration of electrons and holes and if you do not apply bias then the two quasi Fermi levels will merge into one Fermi level and your V A will be 0 because that is your applied voltage is no longer there right in equilibrium. So, in forward bias what is the first thing one is that your depletion width depletion width shrinks. So, it becomes smaller because now carriers are getting injected. Number two thing that happens that is that the V B I gets reduced to V B I minus V A okay. and thirdly now current will start flowing of course right and what are the different components of current that will flow we will come to that very quickly. Okay. Now, current will flow. So, this is your forward bias case and forward bias you will have a lot of current a lot of current will flow okay lot of current will flow and what about the reverse bias case situation I had told you right. So, in reverse bias for example, I told you that you know you have a Fermi level for example, it is not straight here, but suppose I have a Fermi level and then I have a conduction band like that valence band like that. Now, this is P side this is N side. So, what is your uh, reverse bias reverse bias is that you are applying a negative voltage here positive voltage here. So, this is your reverse bias Okay, a reverse bias PN junction. So, what does reverse bias PN junction have? Now, there is a negative negative voltage is applied to the holes. So, the holes will sort of be they will be you know attracted this side and these are electrons and you are applying a positive so the electrons are not here sorry electrons are here in the conduction band electrons will be attracted to this side. So, essentially the depletion the electrons and holes are being pulled up away now from this side and this side. So, the depletion will widen now 
depletion will widen okay depletion will widen so what was initially w will become now w plus delta w it will it will increase and this barrier this barrier also will now become large by q v b i if you are applying a reverse bias voltage of v r this is the you know the absolute magnitude i am talking about then this this barrier will now become built in voltage v b i plus v reverse both are positive okay okay so for example initially the, the built in voltage was 0.76 volt and you are applying a reverse bias of say 2 volt then the total voltage drop here will be 2.76 volt okay so ek to your depletion will become wider now your barrier also will now increase because carriers are pulled away carriers are pulled away from this junction now because you are applying a negative voltage here positive voltage here very low current will flow very little current will flow actually very little current will flow do you know why very little current will flow it's not like your electrons from this side will come out here holes from this side will come out here and your p and n regions will completely become depleted no it's not like to it's not going to happen that is not possible it's not like you have a pn junction and you connect a reverse bias and all the electrons and holes from the pn n side become finished it's not like that then that would be a easy way of undoping a material no that is not possible so what will happen is that you have a very little current flowing because there will be no carrier supply okay this barrier will increase and carriers will be pushed away from this barrier so um, you know uh, at the edge of the depletion essentially you will have no free carriers okay and your current will be very low we'll come to the exact analysis in a bit okay so now let's talk about the forward bias so that we can understand the current okay we are talking about forward bias we'll talk about forward bias so the first thing we need to know in doing forward bias is that uh, so i'll draw a forward bias condition so you have um, conduction band you have valence band this is your quasi formula hole on the p side this is the quasi formula hole on the n side so um, you have electrons injected this side holes injected that side this only happens in forward bias in reverse bias this doesn't happen because reverse bias you are not injecting any carriers okay um, so what will happen is that electrons on the n side are majority they are injected to the p side so they become electrons become minority here similarly holes are injected from here to there once the holes reach the n side they become minority here the moment electrons become minority on p side and holes become minority on n side the minority carriers will do what minority carriers will recombine minority carriers will recombine and decay and the moment minority carriers recombine and decay you have a delta n delta p sort of a thing right they will decay over position this is x this is x they will decay as a function of position so that decay will give rise to a diffusion current right a diffusion current that is there because ho holes are on the n side they are decaying so holes will decay here that will give you a hole diffusion current electrons are sent to the other side electrons will decay here that will give you an electron diffusion current right so there will be two diffusion current one is hole diffusion current because that will holes will diffuse here electrons become minority on this side and they will diffuse here so there will be electron diffusion current now electrons going from this side to that side means that total electron current jn diffusion is going to this side positive x and holes being diffusing uh, they injecting from this side to this side they are traveling this side means that the hole diffusion current is also to the right so both electron and hole diffusion current the both electrons and hole diffusion current is to the positive x axis okay you agree no electrons are going from this way so the whole diffu uh, electron diffusion current will be on the positive x axis so our job is then to find out the minority carrier profile the minority carrier profile as it decays as it decays into the respective side matlab the electrons decaying on the p side and holes decaying on the n side if we can find out the minority carrier profile which is delta px on the n side it will decay and delta nx on the p side it will decay if we can find that then we can quickly find out electron diffusion current as q the electron is diffusing on the p side no so q dn delta nx by dx and the whole diffusion current on this side because the whole is diffusing will be q dp is the diffusion coefficient of whole by the way 
delta p x by d x on the p side. So, if you add these two current that will be your you know sort of the total diffusion current that is happening here ok that is what we want to find out alright. So, how do we find that out now? So, if you recall initially your with an equilibrium before any application of bias before any application of bias you had a band diagram like that it is the same band, band, band gap my drawing may not be exactly accurate, but it is the same band gap. So, ok. So, I look at the end side this is your depletion ok. So, the edge of depletion here this is called the edge of depletion. So, this is 0 this is x equal to w n this is x equal to minus w p. So, at x equal to w n at the edge of depletion the minority carrier concentration is the same everywhere ok and that minority carrier concentration is whole here in the end side p n that is a minority carrier concentration in equilibrium p n 0 I will put p n not means minority carrier whole concentration in equilibrium in this neutral n region ok that is baseline your your the background p type the minority p type in n type that is n i square by the doping that you have n d is the doping here. Similarly, the minority carrier electron concentration on the p side will be you know n i square by n a. So, we will only focus on this n side ok the same thing will exist on the p side we will only focus on the n side the same thing will have exist on the p side ok. So, we are focusing here. So, this is your minority carrier baseline concentration ok. Uh, now, the moment the moment you apply forward bias your barrier reduces no. So, your barrier height will reduce like this ok. So, your barrier height has reduced it has become q v b i minus v a ok which means the this point you know has risen by a value of v a ok. So, the minority carrier concentration here will now change ok. Now, you are injecting holes no of course. So, you are injecting holes. So, holes will have a large concentration at this edge and as you go further and further to the bulk to the inside that minority carrier concentration will decay ok. So, if I draw the minority carrier concentration profile. So, for example, this is the x axis this is your 0 point this this is your w n the depletion and this is your minus w p on the other side ok. So, depletion. So, you see at x equal to w n here. So, the holes are essentially coming to this side no. So, at this point and we assume that inside the depletion there is no recombination that is happening that means all the carrier density is preserved. So, whatever hole you are injecting is everything is unchanged here and over here it comes here which is this edge this edge is actually this edge. So, at that point your hole concentration minority hole p n p n it is a function of x by the way at this point it is p n 0 this is a high value and eventually it will start decaying it will not eventually it will immediately start decaying right it will start decaying and eventually it will become constant that value that will it will become this is the equilibrium value this is the baseline value which is given by this. This is the equilibrium value of minority holes in the material that to that value it will decay to that value it will decay. Why is it large at this point? It is large at this point because holes are being injected they are arriving in fresh quantity in large quantity here and they are decaying as they are going right. So, at this edge they are very high and they are decaying ok. So, the excess carrier this is the baseline this is the, the neutral this is the, the background carrier p type right minority. So, essentially the excess carrier concentration is this this ok this this quantity is your excess which means p n that you have at this point total 0 let me again rub it up. So, the excess carrier concentration is this quantity this because this is your background no this value. So, p n 0 minus p n 0 and p n naught this is your this is your background p type I mean the, the minority carrier it holds in the n type ok and this is your excess carrier at 0. So, the the total carrier at 0 the total carrier at 0. So, the total carrier at 0 minus the baseline or the background carrier gives you the excess carrier. So, this is your excess carrier delta p it is called delta p excess carrier at x equal to 0, but that excess carrier is decreasing. So, it is a function of x 
So, delta p will change as a function of x that is what we want to find out. Now, the question is what is this value the total minority carrier whole value at x equal to 0 at this at x equal to 0 I am cons considering this as 0 okay, as the reference actually this is w n by the way uh, when I say this point is 0 I am talking this as the reference, but it is actually w n here but I was taking this as reference, but you can take w n also. Okay. So, I can either take it as 0 or w n. So, let me take it as a w n only w n. So, this is then w n that is okay. So, at this point what is the excess carrier and what is the total carrier concentration that you have. So, the equilibrium baseline whole concentration as a minority in the n type is given by n i square by n d which is this. Now, because you are applying a forward bias voltage of V A that is your forward bias voltage your energy band has ra raised by that amount. Okay, your energy band has raised by that amount. So, there is a difference between of, of V A between this point and that point right and any change uh, you know the change in carrier concentration depends exponentially on the change in the band on the band position E C or E V right. So, essentially the total carrier concentration okay let me go to a different slide here again so if i uh, talk about this again this is your x this is your 0 this is wn this is minus wp so i told you that this is your your baseline that is pn not equilibrium n i square by nd and i told you that the total because the holes are injected there will be a excess uh, there will be total carrier here which is very high it will decay eventually it will decay like this and it will go and become same as the background right. So, this quantity this point is your total carrier concentration at x equal to w n or x equal to, I mean I, if you can take it as 0 that is different thing okay. This value will be this baseline value that you have which is p n naught this is your baseline value that baseline value has been raised to some amount no that amount is this multiplied by exponential of whatever voltage you have applied by kt because as i keep telling your your conduction band initially it was like that right but the, the forward bias when you applied the conduction band has shifted your conduction band and valence band has shifted right by that amount so, your minority carrier concentration will have increased by that amount or your majority con carrier concentration would have decreased by that amount because the holes are now getting injected to the other side and the holes this is the depletion W n. So, the holes are the maximum here because there is no carrier recombination that takes place in the depletion. So, the holes are maximum here and they will decay now they will decay now okay? that is what is happening they are decaying. So, at this point the total carrier concentration is the baseline concentration times exponential of whatever voltage you are applying by k t okay? that is how it has increased because you know because essentially if you have this point this point and your it has increased to this level then at this edge you no, know, this point and this point is a shift that is q v a. So, your minority carrier concentration will decrease by e to the power q v a by k t the majority carrier will decrease. So, the minority carrier will increase by an amount. Okay? So, that this is the total this is the total whole concentration here and I told you that uh, the baseline concentration is this to which it decays. So, the excess carrier concentration is this the excess carrier concentration is the total whole concentration at x equal to w n minus the baseline. So, this is given by delta p at x equal to w n okay. this is given by p n naught exponential of q v a that you are applying by k t minus p n naught. So, I can take it out minus 1 this is your excess carrier concentration at this point okay. this is your excess carrier concentration at that point and that excess carrier concentration will now decay with position. So, delta p x at any point x at any point x will be the excess carrier here please remember the excess carrier here which is this delta p w n and then it will decay exponentially which is e to the power minus because this is the reference no I mean I am taking this as 0 and this is w n. So, it will be minus x minus w n by the diffusion length 
L n uh, L p this is p type no whole not p type holes are diffusing no. So, it is the diffusion coefficient of or the diffusion length of holes matter L p refers to the diffusion uh, diffusion length of holes. So, how far the hole will diffuse before it recombines this is the diffusion coefficient of hole ok. And this x minus w n comes because I am shifting the origin from here to there that is why it is coming like that. So, essentially it is decreasing exponentially because it is a long diode I am assuming it is a long diode this length is very large when I say large it means it is much larger than the diffusion coefficient. If it is not if it is a short then this will not decay exponentially but this will decay linearly we can come to that little later but as of now we are assuming it is decaying exponentially ok. But if it is a short diode it will decay linearly please remember that. So, what is happening is that um, this is a forward bias junction excuse me, quasi Fermi level. So, your barrier has now reduced to q v b i minus q v a and if I draw the minority carrier profile 0 w n minus w p the minority carrier profile is that it is decreasing and becoming the baseline. So, this is your um, p n naught which is equal to n i square by n d this is your excess carrier at w n and it will decay here. So, at any point at any point x the excess carrier concentration delta p x is the carrier concentration here times the exponential decay which is delta p w n into exponential of um, minus x minus w n by L p. So, I can write that as delta p x I can write this as uh, if you recall from the last slide I can write this as this ok. So, that is p n naught e to the power q v b a minus by k t minus 1 into e to the power minus x minus w n by L p. Of course, p n naught can be written as n i square by n d into e to the power q v a by k t minus 1 into e to the power minus x minus w n by L p. This is your minority excess whole type minority carrier concentration that is decaying on the n side because they are being injected from p side to n side ok. This is the same as p naught I mean the same thing you can maintain right. So, this is a function of x f x. So, if I take q t p the diffusion coefficient of hole on the on this side because holes are minority on the n side times d delta p x by d x this is a function of x then I will get the diffusion of current of because of holes because of holes being injected to the n side they are diffusing no and they are diffusing here they are decaying. So, because of that component what is the what is the whole diffusion coefficient whole diffusion uh, current as a function of x this is a function of x. So, the whole diffusion current will be function of x and it will reduce <coughs> or you know it depends on the slope. So, it will it will basically as a function of x it will change right the derivative of exponential is also exponential. So, same thing is happening on the n side now on the p side now. So, if I go back to the case here. So, essentially ok essentially on the p side here on the p side here electrons will be minority and they will decay they will decay to a baseline. The baseline is the electron minority concentration on the p side which is equal to n i square by n a and this excess carrier will be delta n the electron because the electrons are being injected to the p side no at w minus w p this is your baseline which is this times e to the power q v a by k t minus 1 same thing and it will decay as e to the power minus you know x plus w p by l n the reason is because this w p is negative. So, l n electron diffusion on this side. So, both side it will decay and uh, derivative of exponential or exponential. So, the whole diffusion current the whole diffusion current j sorry on the n side holes are diffusing as a function of x they will decrease ok. If I plot the current so what will happen is that if I take the derivative of that expression here no of this expression then I will get the whole current because of diffusion. Similarly, there will be a similar expression on the n side you will get the electron diffusion current on the n side. 
So, you know, if you have, um, I am plotting this is say x, this is 0, this is w n, this is minus w p, okay. okay, minus w p and um, your holes had been decaying. So, your electron a uh, whole diffusion current also will be a function of x and it will decay like this. This is your j p of x and electrons will be diffusing on the other side. So, electron also will be function of diffusion current the function will be x. So, elect whole diffusion is decreasing as this electron diffusion is this this, but according to Kirchhoff's law that you studied in your high school you know or your 10 plus 2 the total current has to be constant the total current has to be constant. So, what are the other current components then? We have to make sure that the current is constant, the current cannot reduce exponentially like this. Of course, these are reducing exponentially which means there are other forms of current which will make sure that the total current is constant, which will make sure that the total current is constant. Okay. So, what are those current components of current? That we will take up from the next class. Okay. So, we will wrap up the class here. What did we learn in this class today? In this lecture, we have learned that you know uh, when you forward bias, what happens? When you reverse bias a p-n junction, what happens? We are trying to derive a mathematical relation or mathematical expression to understand how carrier concentration varies as a function of distance when we apply forward bias. The minority carriers become and they decay on the respective side. Electrons are injected from n side to p side; they will decay on the p side. Holes are injected from p side to n side; they will decay on the n side that decay is exponential for a long diode linear for a short diode we are only talking about long diode here. So, the decay we found out once we find out the decay the derivative of the decay is the current. So, the diffusion current on the both sides are now established, but I told you that the total current has to be same. So, what are those components of current that will make sure that the total current is same. Okay? So, we will take that in the next class and we will finish up the current voltage analysis of forward bias junction in the next class. Okay? Thank you for your time.